Okay, hi Nicole, part four, yarn. Um, once you've got your cores all set up, it's time to wrap them with yarn. Uh, Elizabeth told me that you've done some wrapping, and so I'll, maybe some of what I'm going to say is going to be superfluous to you, but I want to go through and show you how I wrap a set of sticks, what I do to try to maintain consistency, uh, and then uh, after showing some basic wrapping, maybe doing some advanced uh, advanced wrapping stuff, maybe some stuff with uh, decorative stitching, maybe some stuff with adjusting the angle to get to adjust the mallet head shape somewhat slightly. But let's just do a basic wrap first. So this is a mallet project I'm involved with right now, and it's not often that I make a set of mallets for a specific piece, but this time I am. Um, I really like playing Bach at the marimba, especially the cello suites, and I'm making a pair of sticks, especially for the Sarabande of the fifth suite. Um, it's really beautiful, and it's it's one of the weirder movements in the suites. It's very chromatic. It's just a single line. It progresses by in a very sort of slow and stately way. Um, but you can play it with two mallets, and so I wanted to play with two mallets. And I, when I play with two mallets, I really like that rattan feel, so I'm making them out of those phenolic tubes like I was talking about. Um, and there are some things that I really wanted this mallet to do. I wanted the mallet to speak with a fairly rich tone. Uh, and so I've chosen actually a very, very large core. This is a medium-ish rubber core. Uh, I came across a few of these a while ago. It's large. It's, 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 a, it's a puck shape, but instead of being an inch and a quarter in diameter, it's an inch and three-eighths and it's taller. It's a fairly substantial core to put inside a marimba mallet. It's going to give me a large mallet head. It's going to give me some weight, which means that without a lot of effort, basically just by using gravity, I can get a nice rich tone out of the marimba. But because it's, because it's a fairly medium rubber core, it's not a soft rubber core, it's still going to speak with some articulation, which, which is what I want. I don't want wah, 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 wah. I want la 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 and that little bit I'm counting on that little bit of slightly harder rubber at the center of the mallet um, to keep it fair you know, to, to keep it rich and big toned but somewhat articulate still now over this core because it's a large core but because I want to soften it up considerably I'm going to take one layer of that larger diameter um, one eighth inch rubber tubing. This is tubing that has a one inch inner diameter and an eighth inch wall. And I'm going to stretch it over the top. And the fact that it, the fact that applying it is a little bit frustrating is good because remember, you you don't want airspace, you don't want play, you don't want any of that stuff that's going to make the kind of slapping sounds that are just no good. So I've put that on, and I'm checking to see that it's straight pretty much is there. And then I'm going to wrap it just like I wrapped the other one. Um, and let's get to that. So the things, the things I have near me when I'm wrapping, first of all, I have my yarn. I have my favorite yarn. Uh, it comes in a bunch of different colors. It's made by the Lion Brand Yarn Company. It's called Wool Ease. It's, I think, 80% acrylic, 20% wool. It has a really nice balance between being articulate and not having a lot of noise on the attack. It's also very reasonably priced, I think, a ball of this, which lets you make two or three whole sets of mallets. Uh, a set being four mallets lets you make about ten mallets. It is about five bucks. You can get it really at any Joanne Fabrics in the country. It comes in a bunch of different colors, so if you like all, a bunch of, bunch of different colors, you can do that. Um... They used now now a couple other things about yarn before we get into wrapping. Uh, the composition is important, but it's not the only thing. I've uh, a lot of people get into oh I wrap with all wool yarn, and if you if you have wool yarn that you like that's very nice. But there are also some very nice synthetic yarns out there um, that make very good sounding mallets. Um, in addition to the composition, you're going to want to look at how heavy the yarn is. Um, this is a four-ply yarn. This is a four-ply worsted weight yarn, which is very, very standard for things like crocheting and knitting. It's about the heaviest yarn you can get away with wrapping marimba mallets with because the strands are fairly thick in comparison to the size of a marimba mallet core. 
and that means that you, you want to be able to put enough wraps down so that you get something that isn't bumpy. And if you use a really, really thick yarn and you're only able to wrap it 40 or 50 times, you're going to have bumps and it's not going to be uniform around its circumference. So a four-ply worsted weight yarn is about the heaviest you're going to want to go with. A lot of what are called sport weight yarns or baby yarns are three-ply, and those are generally very, very easy to work with for marimba mallets, and if you find a good-sounding one, go with it. Um, they used to make woolies in a three-ply sport weight, and they stopped doing it about eight or nine years ago, and I did everything but cry, because that three-ply woolies was my favorite yarn on the planet. Now I work with their four-ply stuff, and it, it works a little bit different, but it's okay. You can probably find some very, very fine yarn that's very, very thin two-ply yarn. Um, this mallet series that I showed you in part two, I'm actually going to be wrapping in a very fine brush-finished two-ply yarn that uh, kind of has that same uh, attackless quality that a lot of the Stevens yarn does, and sometimes that's a sound that I want, and so I go with it. Um, but for this Bach, this Bach Fifth Suite Saraband project, I'm going with the basic um, four-ply Woolies yarn. This is a ball that I'm halfway through, so it looks kind of sad. Um, but it's the same as the package that I showed you. So things I have with me. pair of scissors for cutting the yarn and trimming it at the end. I have the mallet. I have the yarn. And I have a yarn darning needle, or a yarn needle. Now, there are bunches of different kinds of needles out there. Yarn needles have two characteristics that are really important for what we're going about to do. They have a sharp point, because you're eventually going to be stitching the yarn through the, the, the yarn that you, the, the mallet had, the yarn that you've wrapped, and so you want a sharp point to do that. But yarn is also fairly thick, and so yarn needles have a, have a fairly large hole at the opposite end. So you're not just going to want to grab any sewing needle because some of them have blunt tips, some of them have small holes, and that will drive you crazy. You want a yarn needle with a large hole for threading the yarn and a sharp point for going through the mallet head. You want all of those things. You also, if you're like me and had a cataract operation, want your reading glasses so that you can see the mallet head as it's in front of you. Now I've got the mallet here I'm going to wrap. And to make it just like the other one, I'm going to wrap it 90 times. Count your wraps. It's one of the quickest ways to make consistent mallets. Uh, if you count your wraps, you'll find that after wrapping for a little while, you'll be able to gauge tension fairly well, and you'll be able to make a set of four matched mallets for performance fairly easily if you count your wraps. Now, I'm going to take this one that I finished, and I'm going to put it down. And I'm going to take this, and I'm going to take the end of my yarn from the ball. I'm going to loop it around just underneath the bottom of the mallet, and I'm going to tie it in a knot to anchor it. So I've got the yarn tied around the bottom of the mallet just once. It's just a regular overhand knot. And now I'm going to start wrapping. One. Two, and each time I'm going to turn the mallet a little bit. Three, four, I'm trying to maintain even spacing, but right now that's not terribly important. Five, what is important, six, is that as I show you the top of the mallet, you can see I'm not crossing over the middle. And the reason you're not going to cross over the middle is because you have to have some way to get through the top to stitch it. And you'll see a lot of, you know, like this Stevens LS10, you can see there's that hole in the top that all the stitching goes through. You get that hole by wrapping the mallet and not going through, not going over the top of it. So where were we? Six, seven, eight, nine, 10. I'm going to knock down a few more of these and then come back.